Okay, this is, um, well, it's the 1st of March 2021, but let's go back to 1966. In fact, let's go back to 1 million years BC. This is a, a British film from Hammer Film Productions, which I'm sure you'll all, all have heard of, and also Seven Arts Productions. Seven Arts Productions is an American uh, production company. They didn't actually do any um, productions themselves. They uh, they partnered with other people and just resold stuff. Um, so this is Hammer and Seven Arts. Uh, the, the film is a remake of, of an earlier American film called One Million BC. Not the years, just One Million BC from 1940. So a much earlier film. But this is 1966. And it features uh, fictional cavemen tribes. Now, cavemen in this case, meaning that it features a lot of cave women as well. And it also features dinosaurs. But of course, this would have been impossible because the last of the dinosaurs went extinct over 66 million years ago at the point of the KT uh, event, the, the KT boundary, geologically. And the end of the Cretaceous was a mass extinction, which not only killed dinosaurs, except birds, but also large marine animals and ammonites, killed ammonites uh, for some reason, all of them gone, all at the same time. And however, the dinosaurs were already dying out even before the KT event. And the KT event is likely to have been an asteroid impact but could also have been volcanic eruption, eruptions causing climate change, which was ongoing at the time. Now, well, let's debate about that. The first human-like creatures, Australopithecus, came about 4 million years ago. And about 2.5 million years ago, Homo habilis turned up. And about 1 million years ago, hence the title of the film, Homo habilis, as well as Australopithecus, uh, went extinct due to pressure from the antecessor, uh, which would evolve into Homo heidelbergensis. And these were the first to cook and wear clothes. And Homo sapiens, us, uh, we didn't arrive until about 300,000 million years ago. Uh, 300,000 million... 300,000 300, years... I'm, what am I, pretty Patel? <laughs> 300,000 years ago. <laughs> 37094 um, and then slightly later Neanderthals arrived after us so they were more recent than us uh, 240,000 years ago and when we came about so did speech now the plot of the film centers around a, a man from a tribe who inadvertently leaves the tribe to experience things he'd never experienced before such as ape men um, which were more primitive than he is and he's washed up on a beach and found by the women of the Shell tribe, uh, who are then attacked by an Archelon. Uh, here's the Archelon. Um, the Archelon was actually a real, um, well, not dinosaur. It was basically a, a primitive uh, sea turtle. But this is much larger than a real Archelon would have been. It's much, much, much larger. And also, an Archelon would never have lived at the time that people would have, etc., etc. Yeah, we, yeah we, let's get over that bit. Uh, the Shell tribe are more advanced and sophisticated than, than his tribe were. And they have, for example, they have paintings on the cave walls, they have shell jewellery, they grow vegetables, and they have a kind of language. All completely new experiences to him. Ray Harryhausen is responsible for the notable stop motion animation in this film. And it, it was all shot in his personal studio in London. The film was directed by Don Chaffee, now, Harryhausen and Chaffee had worked together on previous films using stop-motion animation, such as Jason and the Argonauts. Now, of course, today we look at the stop-motion effects and laugh, but as a child, I didn't really seem to mind this unsophistication at all, as long as they were dinosaurs and I could name them all. And I think this works for most children. Um, the film was shot in Lanzarote and Tenerife, the exterior shots. Uh, Lanzarote and Tenerife in the middle of winter, as well as in London, lots of interior shots in London. Uh, Raquel Welsh had just finished starring in Fantastic Voyage and was still under contract to that studio uh, and was loaned out to Hammer for the production. Now, she was lured by the project, uh, by, lured to the project by the prospect of spending a couple of months filming interior shots in London. At the time, London was swinging London, you see. <laughs> so she, she quite liked the idea of coming over there, um, over to here, because we're in London. I'm in London. Uh, the fur bikini that she wore in the film became one of the looks of the 60s. Now, she actually had three of them for the shooting. And some of the framage of the landslide in the film 
was reused in Stanley, in Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange for a sort of dream sequence of Alex. One million years BC. Have a very good Monday and have a very good week and have a very good March, everyone. Thank you very much. Goodbye.